Hey everyone, welcome back to the Hatch Podcast. I'm Glycel and I'm here today with my co-host Aman and he's going to be introducing our next guest. As always guys, we're continuing our streak of having fantastic guests on our podcast and I've written a little intro as always based on some LinkedIn stalking. So without further ado, our guest began her career as a buyer's assistant before working her way up the ranks of the fashion industry, working as a sourcing manager, head of product, the CEO of a designer brand, has worked in fashion consultancy. So she's touched every single part of the business. And now she's the founder of her own project, a Web3 fashion platform and marketplace, helping people digitize fashion designs and get their products out to the world in a simple and easy manner. And ladies and gentlemen, Please give a warm round of applause for Louise from Fidgetal Twin. Hey. Hi, me. Hi, Louise. Hi. Hi. Thank you for so joining much. us. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, maybe you could start off with um, going through your background and your journey to Fidgetal Twin. Um, you know, having a wide range of roles in the fashion industry, and it's it's quite traditional um, fashion industry, right? Um, I'd love to know how you what i'd love to know what brought you over into web3 and how you discovered the potential with fashion so i started you know my role within the fashion over 20 years of experience has been as aman said you know with luxury brands have my own consultancy been the ceo of shrimps um and there's some common kind of uh practices across all of my experiences you know i was in charge of like planning um merchandising uh product uh you know end-to-end -end supply chain obviously it shows i did everything uh, especially the cash flow and you know stock is a real problem for fashion businesses um and you know witnessing that firsthand we also have done like 10 startups from you know concept to multi-million dollars or failing because they have too much stock and all their money is tied up in cash flow and I think when so this is always on my mind and I never felt great about it because I'd be the one that was predicting what we were going to sell you know it's not back of a fab packet it's quite you know affirmative but there's still you're never going to get it right and you never know what's happen, happening in the market on a global level you know there's uh especially if you're running a global business and then covid happened and of course everything stopped so all the brands that i was working for had so much stock tied up um run out of money it was really really you know tense time for retail and i think nobody predicted that and so that was there it was about a couple of years ago and i was thinking i remember sitting you know somewhere in, in, by the river and just thinking this is this is wrong like this is crazy we've got to i need to think of a different way now you know um of course we're going to get over covid but let's you know I, I put my thinking cap on and I was how can we how can we minimize the risk and how can we uh enable people to be creators like not just brands but open up the the market so that anybody with that wants to have a a, a, a collection can have a collection so for example when I had my consultancy, lots of people come there and start a fashion brands. It still happens now, but through creating digital digitally, we can massively reduce that cost for them. So I started about formalizing how what digital twin can do. So it's obviously reducing waste by producing on demand and not forecasting stock and sitting on stock. So completely different model. So we had to reconfigure our whole entire supply chain um, to do that, which which we've done over the last two years. And then secondly was how can we use digital tools, you know, 3D Clow, digital designs to speed up the whole uh, uh, product development design process to market. And then, of course, uh, NFTs will, 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 will come to that later. But, you know, authentication, there's, there's the, the, the fake um, fashion market is worth four trillion. It's worth more than the actual um, revenue for the whole entire fashion industry. So NFTs obviously can help prevent fakes. Um, so that was really the, 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 the kind of the, the concept um, of digital twin and solving two problems, really. Amazing. And actually, I, I think that's 
there's a lot of interesting stuff on like the 3D side of things. I think we'll touch on after this, but for yeah. Fidgetal Twin, I'm curious if if everything goes right and kind of everything goes to plan, how do you see it looking? Like what's the blue sky scenario in like five to 10 years? Hmm. Um, we're really focused on um, building uh, solutions for designers to make it to make it as seamless as possible. I feel like this is the beginning, okay, of customization like design tools. So we're using 3D Co. At the same time, you know, there's 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 it doesn't integrate fully throughout the supply chain. Um, there's still two different interfaces: there's production and the 3D design. Uh, it doesn't. You can't sort of alter it, and it alters the pattern. You know, it's still. So I, how I see the future is seamless design tools um, for brands, creators, you know, almost, you know, we offer a turnkey solution at the moment, but it's it's in its early stage. So I think developing the tech, so it's advanced that you can just give it to you. You can, you can design your own collection now. We don't need to hold your hand. It's all there for you. Um, and that's our real passion is enabling, developing these tools, you know, um, we're we're working on that uh, invest investment opportunity at the moment so that we can actually just open this up to to everybody and offer brands it reduces cost you can mend patterns so i think that for me is is the future of just enabling everybody to be a creator that wants to be it's really exciting oh I'm just going to talk about digital designers. You know, there's a huge now um, through through 3D Clo and, and marvelous design. There's you can just see the uh, the opportunities that it's an AI that it's that it's a, that it's created. These they, they they weren't able to be creative like that before. So if you just look at that pool right. of of art and creativity, and then you think about how you can seamlessly make that into production. I think that's where that's where I really see the future. Well, I, that's where we're going, you know. Yeah, and you mentioned um, the three D customization design tool. Could you walk us through what that is? Yeah, so we've built a customization tool. It's still in beta. We just launched it with my daughter's school. Actually, they're all eleven, and oh, wow. um, so I talk you through the project. So basically, we have the three D configurator and. You could, there's two types of printing. One is direct to garment, where you know you have the garment dyed and made up already, and you can only put the print here. And one is then direct to fabric. So we've created a direct to fabric customization tool. So you can upload your print wherever you like on the garment. You can have the hood a different color, the cuffs a different color. You can have just, you know, it's, it's completely available to be as creative as you like. So we launched it with the children who all did their own artwork offline. Um, and then uploaded it onto the onto the software and visualized it. And we had three independent judges, um, ex Marie Claire, ex Vogue, a sustainability expert. Um, so really, you know, high credentials. And we announced winners on Wednesday. And mm -hmm. we did this collaboration with Children's Parliament where, you know, it's about democratizing democracy. And then we all went over to the micro factory in East London and saw this garment being made in real time. So we're teaching the children about digital tools, you know, like, and, and what was amazing about it, I think, is that the child um, who won um, has, you know, um, he doesn't excel in academia. And to see him do so well in this competition, it really, really empowered him and it made him feel so excited and it helped his confidence. Mm -hmm. So this is our customization tool. So we're piloting it obviously with the children and then you know we'll release it soon. And then there will be all the collection that we did in Milan. It was like a template collection. We'll upload that to the web to the to the platform so that everybody can then start to change their prints, add their own designs, like this is one of ours. You know, you can use our styles and our patterns and just design what you like. So this is the first stage of what we would intend to, you know, roll out. What a great way to test a product. If an 11 year old can use it, then it's probably ready for the market. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to, I'm going to do that for our own, but I wanted, I wanted to ask, cause I, I like the idea of this tool being offered. Like obviously brands will find it useful, but I'm thinking on the upcoming designer side, because to be honest, I, I went to fashion school for a year in Milan. And although I didn't pursue it, I have a lot of friends right now still pursuing it. And 
the cost of like trying to create collections or garments is so insane that they just don't feel like it's possible to enter the industry in their own kind of way without working their way up for so long. And yeah. I'm curious about how this lowers the barriers to entry kind of and makes it easier for people because the fashion is a tough industry to be in if you're a designer, but you love fashion compared to other fa design industries because those you can kind of get away with making something for cheap, whereas fashion is just never going to be cheap if it's physical sometimes. So I'm curious about that kind of that concept. Yeah, so it makes it so much easier. So say we have an archive of 60 patterns already that are all ours, are all fully graded. And somebody that wants to have their own collection comes to us, they say, you know, they might want to do silk collection or hoodie collection or whatever it is. We've got four, three blocks of hoodies, four blocks of hoodies. They can choose one of our blocks um, and then we can change the fabrics. And, and then we can literally just show them. They can say, oh, I want it to have, you know, this particular print artwork that I've worked on. Or we're working with an AI artist who's created loads of amazing digital art and we can just upload it. Mm -hmm. And literally within a week, and no word of a lie, we can put it to market. So say, for example, this, this, this school competition that we've just talked about. Unfortunately, I've got a, a catwalk in, in, in Portugal on Tuesday um, at the Blockdown Festival. <laughs> and I'm putting this on the catwalk and then we're going to sell it. And it's like, that's the beauty. It's like 11 year old becomes a fashion designer. It's like somebody can instantly have their own fashion collection um, with really limited that's, costs. That's, you know, that, that's the idea. Yeah. yeah, and leaning more towards um, the metaverse, um, do you think the digital fashion industry depends on increased time spent in the metaverse? Or do you or think digital experiences actually? Yeah, or do you think the tools are valuable even without a growing reliance in virtual reality? From our experience and what we've seen is that people have to have a purpose to be in that in that world. Um so mm -hmm. you know, just for Decentraland, for example, there was Metaverse Fashion Week. So you go in for that but it's, it's, it's not a seamless experience. Um, right. Or, you know, so, I, so I've come to sort of conclusion that it's gaming is, is, is the, the best place for wearables, which probably 90% of people agree. That's where people are hanging out. That's where there's a purpose. Um, and so actually quite a few of our partnerships are with gaming companies um because you can you know can create skins that, that you can sell the skins within the gaming um universe and then as you could actually have a click where you can buy that garment and we can make it on demand so i see gaming as a as a first touch point for um sales you know like of course you have your e-commerce that's not going anywhere but actually just one click and it's better than a, a going to a shop in a changing room, you know, because you, you're already immersed in your game, you get a connection with that product mm -hmm. and you see yourself on your avatar, mm -hmm. you know, your avatar might not look like you, but it's still, you know, what you've chosen it to look like. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm curious then on that side, I, I know like gaming is the first use case for a lot of these digital wearables, but virtual reality and like headsets and all this stuff is coming and the, the tech is getting better and like a lot of companies have spent a lot of money working on it and i and i know you 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 say that digital twin i've heard you say on a panel but also on your website is working on eco-friendly practices and i get why because zero waste zero excess but i'm curious do you think that in maybe 10 or 15 or 20 years time when there's more expanded use cases of virtual real reality that any kind of fashion product will ever be created in reality without having a digital version created first and kind of tested in digital markets so that they don't have to spend money on products. Well, that's the dream, isn't it? That's the dream, you know, yeah. really 100%. I, I couldn't agree with you more. That's, that's what we hope for that, you know, it's, there's so many ways of using that to test the market, you know, like we're talking about ways to how, you know, at Burberry, we were planning our, what we were going to sell um, eight months in advance. I mean, that's just, it's impossible to, to work so far away from the market and have like, uh, you know, minimal waste. Um, so if you can, digital tools can create the ability to be able to work so closely to market. It's, it's just, you're just in real time, aren't you? It's, it's, it's so much more 
on the ball. And, you know, I guess there's lots of different, like Zara were very good at it, Sheen, dare we say. Um, but this is still creating a lot of waste. So this is the way forward. Actually, I remember, I remember sitting in my, like, trends and forecasting class and like learning that these brands like forecast things into like a year or two or three years in the future of what they think will be trendy and i remember hating that class to be honest but now thinking that this solution kind of makes it irrelevant because you can kind of just test everything as you go in real time without having to predict where people are going to be it's like it makes it so much more efficient i think and i don't know i think that's an incredible kind of use case here is yeah. You no longer need to like plan that much. You can just test and come to market quick with a, a product idea and then go test it and see how it goes. Yeah, if I had a brand, I'd be designing everything in 3D. I mean, we, we, we service brands, so we aren't essentially a brand. But if it was, if I did have a brand, I would be using the 3D tools and saying to my, uh, you know, all, all our customers, like, we've designed this collection. What do you think? Which are your favorites? Like, do you want to see this in bed? Do you want to see this? You know, like engage with them, actually give them the opportunity because it doesn't cost you anything, it costs you less. Um, yeah. And, and you know, like things change, don't they? I mean, people, trends change as well. So I do, and AR as well, just to touch on that, because that's a great opportunity to be able to interact with a product, you know, uh, in your own home. Uh, before you buy a product. I love the idea of AR. I mean, it's still quite early on in terms of what it can do, yeah. but it, it's, it, it, once that has higher pixelations and can be really true representation of your garment, then like, I think that will also help reduce returns considerably, you know, which yeah. are 30, 35% for most customers because they can't, they don't know how it might fit on them, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of, um, do you guys know that film Clueless where yeah. she has, um, it's basically like an occult, uh, 2000, uh, no, actually a cult nineties film where, uh, this girl loves fashion and she has in her closet, um, a computer where she could basically choose mix and match her clothes. Mm -hmm. That's like the real life version of it. If you mm -hmm. do an AR, Shared really wardrobe, and, and that was in the nineties. You know, and I think that yeah, was in nineties. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, cool. yeah. Super exciting. Yeah. Um, I actually have a follow up question um, on the previous one. But do you believe that digital product testing will be reliable? You know, considering the people may have diverse preferences, and that they might purchase more experimental designs for their avatars compared to real life clothing choices. And you kind of also mentioned this in gaming. So that was like my devil's advocate at that point because, because for example, if say I'm a brand or a designer and I want to make a 3D version of a product and go test it and see if people are really interested. Right, yeah. What people would choose to wear in a game or in maybe VR could be different than real life. More exaggerated. Be more experimental, yeah. try new things compared to when they're out in public and have to actually face the world. And so I'm wondering if they, do you think there'll kind of be like a gap between like the testing and how accurate it is because right, people yeah. might take more okay. risks. In Oh, it's a good question. I think it depends on the garment, doesn't it? I think, you know, a hoodie should be pretty safe with a couture dress. I mean, look, if, if it's mapping your body on an avatar, of course, it's it's really probably limited to like sports and athletes wear. Um, you're never going to be a get true representation of a ball gown in the metaverse. But um, I think with AR, with body mapping, you should be able to actually see how that would look on you. Um, but you need mm -hmm. to use some kind of um, body scanning as well, I think, at the same time, so that you can put in your measurements, you know, and actually know the right size for you. Um, or it scans your body and will tell you exactly you need this size or that side, or it's going to fit like this, or it can even show you hot spots around your body where it might be too tight or too loose. And you, I think these mm -hmm. are probably more advanced tools for actually knowing if something's going to fit really well. But we can kind of, it's great as a kind of a first stage for more baggy garments, I think, no problem. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Actually, okay, before going to our surprise segment, um, <laughs> I have a selfish question that I ask every yeah. guest, and I wanted to know if you could go back and 
have like two minutes to talk with that young woman sitting at her University of Arts London graduation about to take on the world? What kind of, what advice would you give to her? Well, I think it will have to be about entrepreneurship. You know, I spent 22 years working for other people and this is the first, my first startup, my first business. And, you know, yes, I did my time. Yes, I had the experience and I, I probably didn't have the confidence to do it earlier, but it's the best thing I ever did. And to do something that you're really passionate about. So I think I would be, be bold, be smart, have the confidence to do it. You know, it's very difficult in your 20s and 30s mm -hmm. when you, you get very caught up in having to have the house and the children and, you know, it's like a bit of a, or your peers, everyone's got a job. And I, and I think now, like, things are changing a little bit. The, the work, work space is different. We can work more from home. We can be more entrepreneurial. And so I'd encourage that, I think, because I think that for me is, is really fulfilling. Yeah, actually that does help me because to be honest, thinking about like houses, I, I'm a little younger, so thinking about houses and all this stuff. My girlfriend asked me the other day, are we ever going to be able to afford to go on a private jet? And I was like, huh? You make a billion dollars, sure. <laughs> but um, all right, so guest segment. <laughs> What we do essentially is, I don't know if you know the Diary of a CEO podcast, but I stole this from them. So basically, our previous guest says a question that they want us to ask you without knowing who you are. And then you ask a question for our next guest. So I hope it's not the same answer as what you're doing, but the previous guest wanted to know if you were able to build a product right now. Funding does not matter. You have all the money in the world. If it's technically possible, it does not matter. It, it will work. What would the product be? Okay, the product will be um, the the product that can enable anybody to design. So basically, you have a dress, you you use AI, you tell the dress, you tell you tell I want a V neck, I want it to have frilly sleeves, I want it to be flared at the at the hem, I want it to have like a two centimeter frill, I want it to be pink. Actually, I want faux fur on the edge, and I want to have like a love hearts uh, on the shoulder pads, and then it does it, and it automatically then amends the pattern piece. And then that's ready for production. So all we have to do is just press a button and it gets printed on demand and gets made and gets sent to the customer because that will eliminate like 90% of what we do. Um, yeah. So it sounds like digital twin, but in 20 years, <laughs> when all these other pieces of tech are developed. Yeah, we're, Perfect. And we're, uh, yeah, we're really into AI. So we're really kind of going down mm -hmm. the AI route and how we can use that to streamline our processes efficiencies machine learning amazing and what would your question for the next guest be oh god on the spot here okay what would you do if you had five more years to live and the world was going to blow up what would you oh, do wow. so world, ending, <laughs> world ending five years from now what are you going to do yeah the world's ending <laughs> five years what are you going to okay. do with it Amazing. All right, Louise, we want to thank you. Thank you so much for, for coming on the show. Before we end, we kind of, we want to give you the red carpet. If there's anything you want to share with the people at home, maybe where to find you or anything exciting come up, maybe feel free now. We'll also include links in the, in the description, but. So you can follow us on Fidgetal Twin, follow me at louise.lang on Instagram, um, Fidgetal Twin on Instagram, LinkedIn, I'm louise.lang and we're Fidgetal Twin. We're on Twitter at Fidgetal T um that's it uh yeah it's enough isn't perfect. it <laughs> yeah no, perfect and we'll include all the links below everyone listening at home thank you so much for joining us today i thought that was a, a very interesting episode and i think this is a fun space so please make sure to like comment subscribe leave feedback tell us which guests you want to have on and we'll see you next time peace thanks everyone thank you thanks guys